Hello and welcome to Pineapple Talk. Leah, the founder and president of Pineapple Support, which is a non-profit that I set up in 2018, people working in the adult entertainment industry. Uh, we offer a support tech service, which is provided by trained volunteers, and an online therapy service, which is staffed by qualified counsellors, psychologists, and psychotherapists. Hi, and I'm Shelley, and I've been involved in Pineapple Support since its very conception. If you want to find out more information on Pineapple Support, you can do so at pineapplesupport.org. So this is our final session of a four part series where we've been focusing on remaining motivated in challenging times. And in this time, we're looking back and reflecting on our last three sessions where our guests, Sophia Rose, Austin and Nixon, have all generously shared their experiences and views. Yeah. And, and high motivation. High motivation. Hi, oh, my goodness. <laughs> Plunking down in my chair as I speak oh, about the half of the questions that we had written down were just completely irrelevant. These were three people that were so so focused. And I'm in awe. I wish I had that motivation. I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but I go through waves. <laughs> I don't know. You're slumping under the table. So, um, you know, when when there's something when there's something for me to focus on, when there's something new or or, or, you know, I get my head in the game, I can be seriously motivated. But then I'll have a trough. And, and I mean, particularly this year through mm. through COVID and everything that's happened, that there's been months. You know, it yeah. starts off at a day or a few days. You go, do you know what? I'm just going to be easy on myself. And it turns out to be, you know, yes, you're working. Um, or, or, you know, I, I know I'm working pretty much every day. But it's not, I'm not producing the same amount of, of, of work. The output. Yeah, the, the output is down. Output. Um, and and it's interesting because before before working in in mental health with pineapple support, um, when I was when I was employed, um, I would have forced myself to get the work done. Uh, at the beginning of pineapple support, obviously I was you know, working every hour that, that yeah, was available that's because true. you're setting up a company. But I used to be so hard on myself when when I wasn't feeling motivated. If I didn't get enough work done that day, you know, I'd, I'd really be on my own ass. But since working in mental health and reading so much and speaking with, obviously, you know, I've now a lot of my friends are therapists. Of some, you know, I'll, I'll call, I'll call you know, one of, one of our, our therapists up wherever in the world and we'll just have a chat and seeing how they care for themselves with their, their self-care um, and their mental health. And, you know, one, one of the main things that you read is be easy on yourself. And if you want to take that time off, particularly in a, in times like, like you know, this is the past um, 10 months, do it, do it and just give yourself that day but you know don't don't let it turn into weeks and weeks of doing nothing but but give yourself be easy be kind and I guess that's what we did here from all three guests that yes there were times when you know expectations which Sophia Rose is speaking about you know of low expectations sometimes if she needs yeah. to have a little bit of a back seat Austin certainly did not know he he I'm trying to no he didn't did he <laughs> I mean, I felt with Nixon that, you know, there was a, a strong drive, but she that she would perhaps do a little bit more of a, a kind of a bat seat. But with, yeah. with Austin, that I felt that, com I felt very, hearing about his competitive nature in that yes. sense. Oh, yeah. I, I really felt that was a driving, you know, that, that force. Yeah, I mean, when, when I've spent time with Austin, I mean, when, when we're at the shows, the shows are hard, you know, mm. you're up early taking meetings and Colin is agreeing with me in the background there. You're up early taking meetings, you're out late um, networking and um, Colin, this is not a time to network, not with the cat. Um, and so you, you know, you're you working on very little sleep, you're working on a hangover. Um, on for me as an introvert, it's very energy draining. Um, and I'm, Austin is like a machine at these shows, and it's it's impressive. And I know that as soon as he gets back, 
there's not it doesn't even doesn't matter if it's a European show and there's, there's jet lag he is in the office first thing in the morning the next day and it's 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 impressive, but you know, I'm, I I would get burnt out if it was me. I know that yeah. that I would get burnt out. Um, so it's it's just very different. It's very interesting how different people operate and can. I, mean, I guess it's something that makes me think of it. You know, when athletes say when you hit that wall, you go through it almost like yeah. marathon runners. That 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 kind of gave me the mm-hmm. image there almost. Austin, that kind of that driving. I was actually just going to point out that Austin is also about ten years younger than me. And then a few more years younger than me. Can we use a can we <laughs> listen? Can we use so he's ten years younger, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, pretty much. So maybe well we can only find out in ten years' time whether we get down to that. So then okay, so then I think there is an age thing. I think there's there's no doubt about it, is there? You know, in, in terms of our energy natural levels. energies, energy yeah. levels. I mean, yeah. And recovery. Recovery time. Yeah, and I think you know, for all of us, you know, as, as when we were young adults in our early twenties, that that capability. I mean, I was having, I was working three different jobs, one full time and two part time jobs, and still going out and having fun in my early twenties. Mm-hmm. So sleep was. The, Are you sleep, suggesting I'm in my early thirties? I, I'm not <laughs> suggesting anything. <laughs> if you would like me to suggest, that, would you like to? If you would like to wear the early thirties t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I should wear the early something t-shirt we were, um, Shelley and I are both listening to the Brené Brown podcasts and um, and kind of discussing them with each other afterwards uh, and, and, and both brought up the fact that Brené suggested that people from, from their late 30s are um, middle aged and that stuck with me and, and, yes. and <laughs> Shelley said as soon as it, as soon as Brené said it she thought of me and laughed <laughs> Oh, it really has stuck with you. Like, yeah, I think I've forgotten about that. But yes, I mean, but I guess actually going back to Bernie Brown's kind of podcast, I think for us, we I know for me, I found them quite helpful in terms of positivity and motivation. Yes. And it's great to hear that everyone else's, the, 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 the emotions that you're feeling, the, uh, the corona coaster, as they call it, the up and down, the left and right, um, everyone's feeling that way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it has, uh, it's, it's, it's always good to hear, which is another reason why we do these podcasts, why these podcasts are great. Um, you know, it's, it's really important to talk about these type of topics because when, when you think that you're the only one feeling a certain way, that in itself demotivates you and and put, can put you into into a place where you stagnate, hibernate. Yeah. And I guess it's interesting just thinking about going back to our guests. Austin's got a dog, and did Sophia? Sophia's has just got a dog, dog. as well. Um, um, and Nixon has two cats. I, I don't know why. I just, I just think of, with, with dogs, there's you know you got to take them out and take them for a walk. You've got to you know. They, You've got to get up and get yeah. out a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> get out of bed, open the door into the garden, yeah. and fall back in sometimes. But, yeah. Um, but they do need feeding, they do need watering, they need attention. They, yes. Um, yeah. And when you're feeling down, having a, something there, a, a body to hug. I think it's the, that's the thing, actually. I think, you know, for people living on their own, actually, having an animal, you know, a cat or a dog or anything, really, a stroking a, a, a soft furry animal brings your heart rate down if you're feeling stressed. Yeah, that's very good for your cortisol levels. What I found really motivating is um, basic as talking to to other people in the industry because I, I found personally being here and there's no there's no one really that that's in the industry in Ibiza. Mm-hmm. Um, certainly not on a, on a kind of business level. As in, you know, kind of uh, uh, corporate, yeah. the corporate side. I think there is in the north somewhere. I've gone there. Um, but when I stopped speaking to people so regularly at the beginning, I was on the phone to somebody every day from the industry, and then I kind of settled in more in Ibiza and was hanging out with people that weren't in the industry. Um, I found it. You kind of lose touch. You don't know what's happening. It's hard to remain motivated in an industry where you're, you're literally, if you're just a, a, an island floating alone, 
Why them to float? They don't really do they. But you know. Um, but you sound like you've been feeling like a bit of an island. Yeah, and as soon as you start reaching out, and and that's one of the things that I've I've started doing. I've started speaking to um, to a number of my friends in the industry about work, which again yeah. was something that I would avoid. But just to have that, it's almost like being in an office. It's almost like having a team. Yeah. Um, so that's that's certainly helped. Um, I'm trying to hop on the January bandwagon of let's get super motivated. I'm going to not drink and I'm going to eat healthy and I've eaten a chocolate cake and, and drank wine last night. And, you know, it, it hasn't happened. But the thought was there. But January is the whole month. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's, you've got a whole year to get this right, Liv. This is true. You've got a whole year. It's not always going to happen on January the 1st, January the 5th. You know, we need to kind of, it's right, you know, ease our way in. Ease our way in and... Again, let's be kind See, again, to this, ourselves. This is why I like talking to my therapist friends, because when I say anything that's slightly hard on myself, they go, no, Leo, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> maybe not quite so so easy. Maybe tighten the laces a little bit. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, it's... it's um, so I guess most of I mean, thinking about motivation for you, I mean, it sounds like it's been, again, up and down, yeah, you know, as you say. Day. And, well, how, I mean, again, looking at this year going forward mm-hmm. then, how has your motivation feeling work-wise? Basically? Great, because, uh, so it was interesting. While I was working consistently, but with lesser output, Mm-hmm. Um, that in itself because was was demotivating and demoralizing me, um, and I decided to take the the week off between Christmas and New Year, which most people do. So there's generally not a huge amount of emails or things to catch up on, um, and actually taking that time off, I ended up with a notepad next to the bed because I kept having all these ideas mm-hmm. through the night. Because I wasn't so stuck in, and, and stressing about what I wasn't doing, it gave me time to relax the mind and then start thinking about all, all these new things that we that yeah. could happen as well, which, of course, is adding to the workload, but it's exciting and it's interesting and just, as you said, being kind and taking a little bit of time to, to reset um, is now, and, and, and again, I was dreading going into the office. Because of the amount, because of the output, just, you know, sitting there and going, oh, well, I need to do this, and then staring into space, and it was just awful, and I'm excited. In the morning, I'm up, I put the radiator on, um, get my cup of tea, go in there, start getting through emails, start working through all these new ideas. But then I guess that does perhaps show that the, the permission needed to take a break. Yeah. And and I think as you, you said earlier about now that your office is you know is a designated part of the space you know it's not used for anything else it's just used as your workspace. Yes. Yeah. That, that that's that, hugely that's important. That's really really helped. Um, but as you I think say that you know obviously that trying to get that routine and structure which again you know I think all three of our guests have kind of alluded to in different ways of how to kind of put different breaks in the day. Yes. Yeah, I think it's it's. Um, I've got no idea. What I, was, I was thinking about something, and my mind just went. No. Um, yeah, there's white noise. I'll come, right come back round. I'll come back round. I'll come back round. Um, I was actually thinking before you said that about being in therapy and and whether you're motivated or not, you have clients, and you have to speak to them, mm-hmm. and so that's going to be a real push that's you know that's having somebody to answer to that's you know as we're talking with Sophia that having that someone to go to the gym you can't not show up no you know of course if you're ill or something big has happened of course but you have it's that commitment Mm -hmm. you know that there is that contract you as as a therapist you know you contract that I will I am here in this time for that 50 minutes I am here for you and yeah and focused and working absolutely and, yeah, yeah. And engaged and 